Hello everyone, welcome to what I think is a really fun and informative interview that uh, a young and upcoming photographer and content creator named Levi did for me. So he called me and we had a nice chat. He just wanted to get some information on how I perceive photography being creative during COVID plus many other subjects. So I really hope that you uh, watch this video, that you enjoy it, and of course that you'll subscribe to his YouTube channel. Okay, so enough talking from me. Let's get right into the interview. W tell Just briefly, tell the, the folks what, what you're all about, how old are you, and what you want to get out of photography, for example. All right, well, I'm Levi Gilbert, and I actually started about a year ago, like exactly nearly a year ago, there are so many photographers, Mark, you're one of them, who have inspired me as I grow. And I want to be one of those people. That's, that's my photography goal at the moment. It's, a, it's an excellent goal. Very good. And by the way, Levi, uh, I noticed that a lot of my, um, a lot of my friends and uh, Instagram followers are uh, joining in. So why don't you give a little um, in intro of what we're doing here? Everyone from Mark's page, hi. I'm interviewing Mark. I, I'm starting this little series where I'm getting photographers and I'm doing little interviews and throwing them on my YouTube channel, Levi Gilbert. It's not huge, but genuinely, I just really enjoy doing it. And the last person I interviewed, I got so much out of it. And so, well, I actually met Mark and perfect opportunity. How do you continue to expand your style as an artist? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. And I am ferociously, what would you say, um, competitive. But here's the thing. I'm not competitive against other photographers. I'm incredibly competitive against myself. And I absolutely love to push the envelope on what I can do creatively. And that is a fun challenge that keeps me going. Now, the, uh, the bigger question, and I'll keep this short. The bigger question is how do we stay excited about what we do? How do we stay excited about going out to take pictures? Well, for me, it's I, even if, even if I don't succeed, like just say, for example, today after lunch, I'm going to go out to do a, a street photography session. Let's say that the photos that I took, that I take today are not as good as yesterday's. I will not be upset with myself if that happens. I'll, but I will know that maybe in two days from now, uh, I have the potential of creating a masterpiece. And a lot of that is attitude. And a lot of it also is, you know, did you have a bad day? You know, did you, for example, um, did your car not start? So you needed to get, uh, you know, someone to help you that will set you off for your day that means that your photography potentially will have um you know that that taint that tainted aspect to it so what you have to practice is turning off the world make sure you don't watch any news or or uh, social media or anything prior to your photo shoot and uh, start start your day your photo shoot in the best frame of mind that's possible now it works in the other way as well. If you had a stressful day, if you're struggling with something, the photo shoot, the one photo a day going out, that's actually incredibly, um, uh, would you say healing or incredibly uh, restorative. So that's why I feel that, in, especially in these days during COVID lockdown and uh, struggles in the world, is that uh, being forcing yourself in a good way to take a picture a day is excellent. We got another question, and this one, it's one of my favorites because it's very controversial. But uh, as I Photoshop a lot of my photos, mm -hmm. but someone asked, should we be able to edit our photos? Photoshop, Lightroom, what's your opinion on that? Yes, it's a very good question. Now, for landscapes, I do enhance my pictures. For example, if you're, uh, if you're people, and also my friends who are joining us, if you pop over after this is finished to... Mark Hemmings Photography on Facebook, not Mark Hemmings, that's my personal one, Mark Hemmings Photography, and the latest post has a beautiful blue sky 
uh, of, with, of a small mountain in the ocean with a dog and two and a couple. That sky was light, light blue. And it was, uh, you know, the content was great, but I wanted a bluer sky. So I had full, you know, um, I full, uh, uh, we'll just say, permission from myself to enhance that blue sky. No problem. Landscapes, I don't care what happens. Now, I do have parameters with regards to street photography, my, my great love. In street photography, I erase nothing. I clone stamp nothing. I delete nothing. The only thing I allow myself to do is cropping, rotating slightly if I need to. And of course, I shoot in black and white with my Fujifilm. So, of course, it's a black and white shot. And I do tonal adjustments. Mm -hmm. Now, if anyone wants to know what tonal adjustments are, that's simply adjusting light. And that could be shadows, highlights, or mid-tones, if you so desire. Now, with regards to commercial work, and, and, and commercial work, for those who, who don't know that, what that term means, it's anything that's advertising-based. So photography for a client who's paying you. That is entirely based, those ethics of editing are entirely based on the client's desires. So you would definitely do anything that they want based on their parameters because they're paying you. So let me, let me just sum this up. Landscapes, I do enhance. Street photography, I don't. Travel photography, I don't. Travel photography, I, I have the exact same parameters as my street photography. Now, this is very important. Mm -hmm. These are my parameters, not yours, not anyone else's. So never feel pressure to follow my advice because it's your art. You can do anything you want. However, one interesting fact, it's psychological. How, if you place a parameter, an ethical editing parameter on one genre of your work, it becomes incredibly easy to be creative. Why is that? Because when we place a limitation on ourselves, we have to think of other ways in order to get the shot or, or create a better shot. Here's another great example. I only use one prime lens when I go out for photo shoots or do travel to different countries or, or I'm on the street. And it's usually a 23 millimeter prime lens. Now, I have a Fujifilm, so that would turn into a 35 millimeter prime lens for those who wanted to know. And it's non-zooming, it doesn't zoom. And that means that I physically have to move my body, me, back and forth, left or right, here and there. And that, that limitation, that self-imposed limitation is a, does wonders for the creative process. Yeah, and you don't have to, and you can like each day try a different lens. Like uh, for example, I'm always using my 23 millimeter every day, but for those who, li who love nature and like wildlife, then they would choose to use maybe their their 70 to 200 zoom lens on one day. And then another day they might try their 300, who knows, whatever, whatever you you like, try only using one lens during that full day of photography to really get to know it. And also to feel its limitations. It's really helpful. We got another question from her photography world. And uh, she asks, how does COVID affect your work? That's a very good question. So, and it's incredibly <clears throat> present for me because my work is travel photography of all things <laughs> and I'm not traveling, I'm not traveling at all. So what that has done for me, it's been a very, very good thing. Now COVID is a disaster for the world. So I'm never going to say that COVID is a good thing for me, but the results have been good in the sense that being, being stuck on the East coast of Canada without the ability to travel, has given me a, a new um, interest in photographing, returning to my roots of photographing nature and landscapes. And to be honest, I haven't done nature and landscapes in 20 years. I first started out oh, doing goodness. nature and landscapes when I first start, started to learn how to take pictures. And I've been doing uh, photographing waterfalls in my, <clears throat> my own province of New Brunswick on the East coast of Canada, because I'm in the, creating an online course to teach people how to create the best waterfall photos possible. This is a great thing that, that the COVID lockdowns has allowed me to do. 
The other thing is, I, like I said, I've been able to explore my own city of St. John, New Brunswick. And every second day, like I said as well, there'll be a new street, photog street photo on my Instagram page and on my Facebook page for people to enjoy with a lesson. So those are two really good things that have happened with regards to COVID lockdown. And I wanted to give that positive spin because there's so much negative with regards to COVID that I wanted to encourage people that there is some positive, we just have to find it. Do you know when the course is coming out? It's a big, it's a big course and I wanna get winter photography, waterfalls in it as well. So probably the spring. Could you give us all maybe three quick tips that you might be sharing in that course to capture waterfall? Cause I love, I love waterfalls. They are my absolute favorite. Mm -hmm. And I went through a bit of a, how to take a landscape photo rabbit hole once we got here to Colorado. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to see what you think. Yeah, certainly. So the big mistake is people try to do waterfalls in the daytime, uh, but that is usually a disaster unless you have specialized equipment like special filters and so on. So I advise people to do their waterfall pictures actually before sunrise or after sunset. And uh, of course you need a tripod. You can't get around that. Now there is an exception, by the way, if you have an iPhone or an Android, there are apps that will mimic waterfall pictures. And the, for example, you can do that with iPhone Live. That's a live feature within iPhone. Or if you have an Android, there's just go to the Google Play Store and there's, you just type in waterfall or slow shutter app and you should be able to find quite a few of them. They're really good. Also, um, mm -hmm. Lightroom CC, the, the software I use every day has a slow shutter option as well. And that's the within the camera in Lightroom CC on your iPhone or Android. Now you do need to have a tripod for that for your iPhone or Android, so keep that in mind, but it works amazingly well and it records itself in a very high quality format. So that's, I would advise probably the, the Lightroom CC mobile app is probably the best quality for getting a waterfall picture with your iPhone or your Android. All right, so I have another question for you. Yeah. Uh, what are some photographers that have heavily inspired you throughout your photo journey? Yes, so uh, that, that question comes up quite a bit. And the, the honest answer is that, um, that it, <clears throat> okay, let me, let me back up. I, I learned photography in Japan in 99 to 2000. But interestingly, it wasn't at a school and it, it wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't take any training at all. In fact, all I did every day was I'd go through the subway stations and go through the cities and I would study the advertising photography. Now, if anyone knows or have seen pictures of like Tokyo subway or something, they know there's huge posters uh, life more than life size and it's just filled with billboards and neon and all that stuff and I would study every day Japanese magazines Japanese posters and I would try to figure out how in the world did they create such amazing work the Japanese photographers are the world world's best I think and so that was my mm -hmm. training for a year it was self-training now with regards to uh, my favorite genre of street photography this is going to be a little bit of um, an on-the-nose answer. Uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson, he is the classic uh, choice for all street photographers. He, uh, he sort of, he didn't invent, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> he didn't invent street photography by any means, but he certainly popularized it because he was so good. So if anyone wants to check out um, Henri Cartier-Bresson, or in English, you could say Henry Cartier Bresson, that's how you would spell it. Uh, and that type that into Google and you'll see that I think he was, I think he originated a style of photography that I really like that, that uses, that doesn't photograph the person on the street for the sake of photographing a face. No, in fact, a lot of the people were a bit smaller, but it was the design of the background, the, the urban environment that he really loved. And he loved uh, the uh, the study of the person in their in uh, urban environment. What's your thought process 
when actually going out to take photos. Like he, I can't pronounce his name, but Henri, some yep. French name. Henri Cartier Bresson. Yeah, I can pronounce that. <laughs> um, he went out to capture people in the urban environment. Environment. What is your mindset when you go out to take pictures? Yes. So it it depends on where I am. For example, let's just go to street photography, and then we can maybe chat about a different genre. Uh, I go out first with uh, respect for the environment. I will never make a person look silly or feel silly or uh, be presented in a in a strange way. In fact, if you look through my Instagram feed after we hang up, uh, this is for everybody. You'll probably notice that most of my street photography, the people aren't even visible. I mean, the faces. Now, some are, but most aren't. And usually what we're trying to do in street photography is, is not, like I said, we're not photographing a, a, a person for the sake of photographing a person. We are actually doing a study. You could call it a case study or a historical record of the person or the people within this 2020 in the history of the city. For example, you could say, well, what's the value mark of street photography? What, what, what are you doing for the world? Well, interestingly enough, if we look at the history of New York City, and we, we love going back to see New York City in 1950s. We love going back to see in the 40s, the 30s, the 20s. Am I right? Everyone, or your own city, or London, or Japan, mm-hmm. or whatever. These are all street photographers. And they, they were the people who were out photographing the, the, the everyday worker, or the man on the street, the woman on the street. These have historical value. So what we're doing today will have historical value 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. And that's the value mm-hmm, yeah. of what we're doing. So I go out, I prepared myself, the people I'm going to present them either neutrally or in a positive light and never in a negative light. Often I can't even see their faces anyway, but I go out in, in a sense of, uh, of uh, expectation. And like I said, I usually start my day at a cafe. I love cappuccino. I love espresso. And that sets me, sets them, you know, in the right mindset. And I would say, mm-hmm. don't, don't start your photography if you're feeling grumpy or if you didn't have enough sleep or you're frustrated with something. If you have, uh, you know, like your happy place, like uh, for me, it's a cafe or whatever, you know, then, then get yourself in a, in a place where you can say, you know what, I'm going to have fun and I'm going to get some great stuff. Even if you don't get some great images, at the very least, you're getting your 10,000 hours in. And if anyone mm-hmm, wants to know what the 10,000 hours reference is, it's, it's usually accepted wisdom that you become an expert at something after 10,000 hours of working in that, 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 that craft. Well, yeah, no, the 10,000 hours thing, I was like, oh, yeah, that's easy. And then I realized how long 10,000 hours is. <laughs> and so I'm still, working, I'm still working towards that, still getting there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And don't ever feel pressure. Like uh, the big, the big creativity killer is to measure up, you know, there's a a hundred different people or things we could measure up to, but that's just a waste of time. Ideally uh, you're, what you're doing is you're creating work for yourself. Now that the, of course, that's not the case if you're working uh, commercially for a client, but uh, let's just say photography for yourself, for your own soul you have to be very, very careful that you don't compare yourself to anyone else. Now you can draw inspiration from other photographers. Yeah, definitely. But never feel less than because your work doesn't stack up to the other guy in your own city. Or with the internet, it's like, you know, I caught myself in a loophole of, um, of comparing myself to the experts. And I'm like, hold on. I'm actually 16. I think I have a while to catch up. Yeah. And that's not even what it's about. But like, you know, just getting some, uh, a good view of where you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And because you're 16, uh, that gives you a really great um, uh, ability to forecast future trends. And that's really important. 
Do you remember like a specific moment where you're like, okay, photography could be my thing? Yes, uh, that would have been when my first job, my first paid job was in the movie industry in, uh, what was it, 2001 or something like that. No, it was in before that, in fact. And I think it was, it was in 98. And uh, my job was to take pictures of the actors. And it was fantastic. So I said, you know what, I can actually get paid for this. And that's how I got my career going. Well, thank you so much for coming. No problem. And thank you everyone else for joining. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, make sure that um, for both of us, uh, Due East Photography and Mark Hemmings, that you guys um, always feel free to comment, to ask questions, and we love to interact <laughs> with you guys. Always. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much, Mark. All the best. Bye. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that interview. It was so fun to do, and I'm always happy to help younger photographers, artists, creatives in any of their endeavors. It's very valuable, and it really, uh, it sort of gives me a great hope for the future. So, um, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video.